Now it's back on the up and up, and I think a lot of that is just because of the new regime that's there. He's healthy. They're playing football the right way, right? And as we always talk about, it's not that easy just to go out and go, oh, hey, we're going to get we're gonna get another quarterback that will be really talented. Kyler Murray, yes, has size issues, but he's got a lot of other elite skills. He has an elite arm. He's an elite athlete. You know, there's not a lot of quarterbacks that, you know, you can say that about all the time. The Arizona Cardinals are not a team that really gets talked about at all by the media or anywhere on TV, but this is a team that just got to make 12 draft choices a few days ago, highlighted by their first one in Marvin Harrison Jr. And this is a team that is going to be getting their starting QB back in Kyler Murray. And while the Cardinals aren't a team that I view as a contender, I definitely think they will make way more noise than people expect. And I'm going to talk about why I think this offense is going to completely rebrand themselves from what they were in 2020. And I'm not just saying that for the sake of making a video, I really do think this is going to be a more exciting team to watch than most people think. Before I get into everything in this video, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are now on the road to 30k subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. Alright, so the Cardinals front office really had their hands full in this year's draft, and there were just so many different outcomes that could have affected what they did. If three quarterbacks did not come off the board right away, that would have wrinkled their Marvin Harrison plans, and really, it could have changed everything because they may have decided to go after and select one of the QBs available, or they could have traded away their pick for something that felt made more sense for them because getting more draft compensation or some players that would have filled their immediate needs also could have been a great option for them. And last season obviously exposed that there is a ton of holes to fill throughout this roster and I'm gonna get to all of those holes and I definitely want to talk about their selections and of course Marvin Harrison Jr. but I want to start off with Kyler Murray because he is the guy behind center that is coming off an injury and I definitely think he brings an interesting dynamic to this team even though so many people have wrote him off. The Cardinals coaching staff really expects this guy to make a big leap this season and I know that's true because like I said they could have easily moved on from him through the draft or even just by bringing in somebody else because they're definitely definitely were and still are some guys available. But anyways, Murray is now going to have some weapons to throw to, so there is no excuses for him. According to coach Jonathan Gannon, this is my second offseason, but really, in my mind, it's my first offseason with him just because he's now acclimated into the program. He wasn't doing what he's doing right now last year. So yeah, we're going on year two, but this is really a year one offseason for me where I've seen him on the field with everybody, in the weight room with everybody, lifting in meetings and all that stuff with everybody, so that's been really cool. We really all have to remember that Kyler Murray is a guy that threw for nearly 4,000 yards in three straight seasons, and his touchdown to interception ratio and QBR improved a little bit each year. I know he's short, and that's a big thing, but he's mobile, can make plays out of nothing, and now that he's got a guy that he can just throw the ball up to, I think it's going to be fun to see what he can do in 2024. So now moving on to that guy in Marvin Harrison Jr., as an Ohio State fan, I obviously know all about this guy. Not only is he one of the best prospects we have seen in quite some time on the field, he is also a good guy off the field, and I think everyone throughout the organization is going to love him. And he's really going to take away one side of the defense, and depending on how hot he starts out, he could even see some double coverage. He really carried an Ohio State team offensively that struggled at times with an average QB for the school's standards. And in the Michigan game, he was really the only one that showed up. So there is no question that he can come through when the lights are the brightest. At Ohio State, he put up over 100 yards per game, totaling to 1,200, and he had 14 touchdowns. And there were definitely games where he could have scored as many times as he wanted to, but he had to shut it down early because of the score. I just think this was a great pick that made tons of sense for the Cardinals, and I heard so many people saying, who's going to throw it to him? And that statement just didn't make any sense because Kyler Murray is a good QB, and I think he's going to reprove to everyone who he is. Anyways, looking at the roster outside of Marvin Kyler Murray, obviously you can't expect a huge amount of production, but I think they will have some solid pieces to work with. They have Michael Wilson, who last season put up 565 yards with three touchdowns. They have Zay Jones, who put up 321 yards and two touchdowns last season. And then they have Trey McBride at tight end, who to me is a super underrated player and put up over 800 yards with three touchdowns with poor QB play for over half of the season with Murray being out. 
So obviously, with a healthy Murray, I expect better numbers from these players, and I do think Marvin Harrison can have one of the best statistical rookie seasons ever with the volume he could be getting on a game-to-game -game basis. As for the running game, the Cardinals offensive line has actually quietly sort of become a strength. They found a way to protect quarterback Kyler Murray at the end of last season, they opened gaps for running back James Conner, and they did so despite having a rotation of left guards through injury and time sharing. James Conner had another solid season with over a thousand rushing yards and seven touchdowns. And I'm going to say it again, since the Cardinals should have a better offense around him in 2024, that's only going to make things easier. Now switching over to the Arizona defense, this is a unit that consists of many young and still developing players. But after the draft, many people think that they improved the depth of this D a ton. Arizona walked out of the 2024 NFL Draft with 12 total selections, and to no surprise, General Manager Monty Ozenfort opted to supplement much needed help at defensive line and corner. Some of the additions they made in the secondary include Max Melton, Elijah Jones, Taylor Demerson, and Jaden Davis. Melton will look to claim one of the starting spots on the outside, with Sean Murphy Bunting also in the mix after signing in free agency. While the Cardinals drafted two cornerbacks last year, drafting Elijah Jones this year gives them much needed flexibility and a good depth investment in case they want to play more press coverage. As for their safeties, they still have Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson, but Baker requested a trade last offseason in a contract leverage move and is still playing on the last year of his deal entering 2024, so he might not be there for the long haul. Taylor Demerson will likely be a rotational player in 2024, but could see a starting spot open up for 2025. Although the Cardinals didn't make many defensive line additions in the draft, the players they did select can be impactful. Robinson was a reach on my board for where Arizona selected him, but I still do like the fit. So all in all, I don't think you can have too many expectations for this defensive unit, but I do expect them to be better than last year, and really, what you should be looking for is the flashes of potential, because I really do believe this is a team that could become a real dangerous playoff threat in a year or two. They just need to allow some of their young guys to develop together, and on top of that, they should always continue to look to add talent to the roster. That's really all I have to say for this video, thank you all so much much if you made it to this point and if you enjoyed and haven't yet make sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world and also follow me on instagram because i'm posting tons of cool sports content every single day and until next time i will see you all later